thank you for the invitation to speak. My name is Mary Nell Townsend, and my role in the Attorney General's Foster Care Advisory Group was as a representative of Ohio Family Care Association, the statewide voice of foster, adoptive, kinship, and respite families. But I stand before you today simply a foster and adoptive mom. I've been fostering over 20 years now, first as a single adult and later with my husband as we fostered and adopted children together. To understand foster parents, you have to understand something about the crazy circumstances we never could have imagined for our lives. For example, parents in our country often worry about child predators, especially at parks, playgrounds, or the places children frequent. This is the background from my experience at a McDonald's restaurant with an indoor playground for children. Here I am with a video camera and camera, crying. And peeking from the restaurant area to the playground area, videotaping and taking pictures of a beautiful, fair-skinned, red-haired, blue-eyed little girl toddling around the play area. She was with a woman who looked just like her, with flowing red hair. I was startled by the store manager's hostile questions about just what was I doing, and I quickly wiped back my tears and earnestly explained I was trying to take pictures of my daughter's visit with her mother. It made perfect sense to me, since I had raised this two-year-old little girl since infancy. Unfortunately, she had not been able to really know her birth mother, who had been incarcerated much of those first 24 months. I knew if my daughter saw me, she would prefer my company and not interact as freely with this unfamiliar woman, her birth mother. Of course I had every legal right to photograph my own child, but the angry, confused look of the store manager made me see that none of this made sense to him. And so it is with foster families. We find ourselves on paths and in situations we never could have guessed. Two summers back, while other people picnicked and took their kids swimming into camp, I was locked in my room so my children wouldn't hear me on the phone with a local detective, coroner, funeral home, and prosecutor, confirming the tragic death and arranging to claim the body of one of my children's birth parents. We really had no money to pay for funeral arrangements, but like so many other times in the foster care journey, we told our kids we would cut back and make do with less for a time to be able to do what is right at this time. We wanted this birth mother to have a known grave and a place her family and my family might visit. This was even more important to us now because the dream that my precious child might ever have an earthly relationship with her birth parent was now gone. I'm humbled as I think of these and so many other moments along this unique road. Like the little six-year-old who jubilantly exclaimed, he loved this food. He had it before with his mom when they found it in the grocery store dumpster by his home. What food? Grapes. This same child, found alone in the middle of the interstate, fearfully eyed the twin bed in his room as a new foster child in our home. As foster parents being trained to understand all the likely reasons bedtime and bedrooms might cause fear and panic, we were totally caught off guard to, turn, to learn the real reasons in this case. Sheets, one hugging mattress, and one laying on top, then a blanket, comforter, and pillow on a real bed, all his. He had no idea what he was supposed to do with this piece of furniture, and the tough little guy was embarrassed and afraid of getting it wrong. The longer I live, the more I realize how much I don't even know that I don't know about the secret and important world of foster children and their families of origin. I'm humbled and honored to have some small part in loving and partnering with these families, believing that there but for the grace of God go I, as so many struggling families parent the way they were parented, or wrestle with the strangling grip of addiction or untreated illness. Foster families know the children in their care. They live together, learn together, laugh and cry together. At times, these parents have the most contact with the children's biological families as well. 
agencies, guardian ad litems, court appointed special advocates, judges, and magistrates benefit from hearing and embracing the foster parents' unique perspective when making critical decisions that have lifelong and generational consequences for children and all those they love. I think of the privilege I've had to meet many foster and adoptive and kinship families around Ohio, committed to the same love and service, and some of them are here today. Their personal stories make me know that after 20 years, I haven't even begun this work of fostering. I'm like a foster parent wannabe when I consider these families of tremendous strength, personal sacrifice and dedication, motivated by their determination to make a difference. It is this type of commitment we celebrate and acknowledge today as foster parents across the state send their thanks to Ohio Attorney General Mike Klein. Thank you for your heart and concern for Ohio's children. We also thank the leadership from Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, the Ohio Courts and Supreme Court, Public Children's Services Association of Ohio, Ohio Association of Child Caring Agencies, the Court Appointed Special Advocates, State Legislators, Physicians, and System Partners in giving foster parents a seat at the table and beginning to build a culture of collaboration, mutual respect, and willingness to honestly assess strengths and weaknesses with the common interest of children and families firmly in being.